So hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Wood Heat Wednesday. This week I'm going to talk a little bit about probably one of the most underutilized pieces of equipment when it comes time to harvesting firewood. Let's get into it. So a couple of summers ago, I was outside doing some yard work. I noticed this car starting to slow down as it approached our house. I mean, I'd say it was a guy probably in his 40s or something, someone I've never met before, and uh, had his son along with as well. He was probably eight to 10 years old. You know, so wood piles, we started got chat back and forth a little bit, sharing, cutting stories and different tools and gadgets that we use when we go out and cut wood. He was telling me all about his skid steer that he uses and all this this fun stuff. Well, somehow the conversation ended up leading towards uh, getting our chainsaws pinched or stuck. And that's generally something that people don't like to admit happens. It does happen from time to time, but obviously the more experience you get, the less likely that's gonna happen. You utilize certain tools, you're able to make certain cuts. You notice maybe there's a downward pressure or something, you'll come in, make a quarter of your cut on the top and then come in and complete your cut underneath, preventing that potentially happening. So anyways, this guy goes on to tell me about how he got his chainsaw stuck. And before he could even continue with the story, his son pipes in and just totally spills the beans. He's like, yeah, dad, don't you remember when you went then and got the husk of Arna saw and you went to go cut that one out and then you got that saw pinched. And then you went and grabbed your other saw and then you got that one stuck and you had to have so-and-so come over with their tractor and help drag this thing to relieve the pressure off of that. And it, it made me laugh a little bit just because it does happen to the best of us. I don't know, uh, three chainsaws worth. There's definitely some little things you can learn along the way to prevent something like that from happening. But I think one of the most valuable pieces of equipment is a felling wedge. So this week I wanted to go a little bit deeper into felling wedges, really a very vital tool when it comes time to fell trees in particular directions, maybe prevent your saw from getting pinched when bucking up logs. So let's dive into a little bit more detail on this, maybe some things to look for while selecting your wedges, as well as a few things that I've just recently changed that has made life a lot more easier for me. First off, wedges generally tend to be made of a plastic or a polymer material pretty heavy duty, hard plastic that can take some abuse. The nice part about a wedge like this is if you end up nicking it with your saw, you're not gonna destroy your teeth versus if you were using like a metal wedge. You can also make wedges out of wood. I would definitely suggest doing that with a hardwood, something like an oak or a hickory. You can easily make three wedges out of a small chunk of two by four. However, hardwood two by fours tend to cost a lot more than pine. And these wedges come in quite a variety of sizes, both on the taper as well as the length. A lot of times you see them anywhere from five and a half inches up to 12 inches. Five and a half to eight inches tend to be pretty much the norm in the area that I live, I tend to cut a lot of eastern hardwoods. White oak, red oak, ash, elm, just a little bit of poplar from time to time. So the wedges I carry is generally one five and a half inch wedge, and then I carry two eight inch wedges. When you're dealing with a larger tree, you're gonna want a larger wedge. And of course, the longer the wedges, the more gradual that taper will be, so it'll be easier to drive into that tree. And if you're working with a smaller tree, the one thing you have to really look out for is making sure that wedge is not too long as you're driving that through your curve or your back cut, it's not gonna come in contact with your hinge. Most of the plastic wedges you find nowadays are created with a very bright color, so it makes it very easy when you're out processing your wood, you drop them on the forest floor, it's pretty easy and quick to find them. When selecting wedges, one feature I personally like to have on my wedges are teeth, or what they're sometimes called as dogs because they bite into the wood. I find this really helpful. You're driving a wedge into a real high pressure area, just a lot less likely to back out because it's biting into the wood. Also, you'll notice on the back side of the one with the teeth, there's a smooth side. So that's really nice if you need a little extra lift and you need to stack two wedges on top of each other, you can put the two smooth sides so they're not gouging each other up while still having the teeth to bite into the wood. It's no mystery why felling wedges are called felling wedges. They're a lot of times used for felling trees helps give you a lot more control on where that tree is going to drop. Even if you have a tree that has a slight back lean, you can help convince that thing to go the other way by creating enough lift 
to uh, start getting it to go the other direction. So one area I tend to use wedges is, well, not only with just the felling the tree, but a lot of it has to come around to how I set up when I drop that tree as well. I'm going out and cutting, not for lumber, I'm not trying to maximize that tree, so I'm not cutting right just above the ground. When I go out and cut, I'm trying to make sure I'm making a nice safe cut, be able to see exactly what I'm doing, and trying to just prevent myself from having to bend over, save the back a little bit. So a lot of times when I put my notch in the tree, I'll do that somewhere around my waist height, I'll drop that tree, and then I can either leave that stump and utilize something to help pull that out, give me a little bit of a mechanical advantage to do that if I need to get the stump out, or I'll come in and actually lop that stump off. And to do that, I just drive a wedge in there to prevent my bar from getting stuck and then finish my cut. So with me getting out and cutting a lot more here lately, trying to get wood piles filled back in, um, I've been trying to do a better job carrying my wedges with me. I always have them every time I go fell a tree, but most of the time when I'm out just bucking up logs, I have them sitting in the cutting basket, which is not always right by me. It could be 100 yards away from me in the woods, it could be sitting back at the truck, it's just not always within arm's reach. And a lot of times the, t the point where I realize I need those, I'm already halfway through a cut where I'm like, eh, I probably should be using this. And um, then I have to stop, go get the, the stuff or try to figure out a way to make sure that I don't end up getting myself hung up safely. So I've been looking at pouches the last couple years, trying to break down and, and make that a little bit more of a smoother part of my workflow. However, when I've looked at a lot of pouches, a lot of times you're just talking $10 and up in those kind of the bottom of the barrel ones just really have not been what I'm looking for. There's not much more than a little bit of fabric that's kind of loosely holding some wedges together. I want to show you guys something that I just got. Uh, a little tool belt from the hardware store and uh, I'm using it to hold my felling wedges. Not really designed or meant for this, but this thing works fantastic. It's got a little loop here to close the bottom and what I really like about this is how quick and easy it is to get this on. You can see it's got the standard belt loop if you wanted to use that method. However, it's got this thickened hard back flap here. And you can easily just slide this right into your back pocket or even just under the loop of your chainsaw chaps. So it's really quick to just grab this out of your box when you need it and away you go. The cool part about that thing is it's only right around $10 and it's even got a spot to hold your scrunch. I've been pretty impressed with it. I've been using it the last couple of times I've been going out. It's been really nice. It's been changing up my workflow so I'm not running around searching for my wedges when I need it. It's just all within arm's reach and I've uh, been a pretty nice little addition. A little surprise. I didn't really plan to do that but I was picking up a couple of extra new wedges and happened to notice that when I was in the shop. I was like, hey, this might actually work. So tried it out and I've been liking it so far. I'd be curious on what you guys use. Do you do similar like what I do, just throw them in the milk crate? Do you use them at all? Do you have a designated pouch that you carry around? I'd love to kind of hear a little bit more about what you utilize. Just another quick side note as well, I got the Woodox Sling Giveaway. Uh, if you're watching this early on Wednesday, uh, you still have time. If not, I'm gonna be doing the drawing later, probably right around six, seven um, central time uh, this evening on Wednesday the 12th and then I'll put a video out on Thursday announcing the winner of that. So if you have any interest in winning that Woodox Sling, I would definitely recommend going over there and get, getting entered. I'll put a link to that video down in the description below where you can find details on how to do that. Hope you guys enjoy the video, and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.